Hello, everybody. Today for our Make It Colorful Craft. We've been doing colorful crafts all summer because of our summer reading program, Reading Colors Our World. Our summer reading program is over, but hopefully you've had really, really vivid and colorful and rich experiences through our program, through reading, through just a lovely summer. And I've got one more really fun, colorful craft. Uh, we are going to do some flower pounding. It's a way of taking the pigment from the flower and printing it on a surface. There's a couple of things you can do, but I'm going to stick with paper. You can do it with cloth. It's a little different process, and I don't want to go that, uh, that route, so we're just going to stick with the paper today. And I've brought in lots of flowers from my garden. You could easily just go buy a bouquet of flowers at the store if you want, but I have some things to pick, so I'm gonna work with those today. So my impatients are doing exceptionally well, and so I have these really love, lovely, delicate little blossoms that um, I cut this morning and plan to pound, 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 uh, see if we can transfer some of that pigment. I also have, uh, this is kind of light, so we might not get as much, but this is my, um, strawberry and cream hydrangea. I don't know if I'll get the pigment that I want out of that because it's light in color, but I do that, love that pink, so I cut that. Uh, I have lilies throughout the year. I really love the, the two colors. And then these are really big blooms. These are my hibiscus. So this is really rich in color. I thought we could really get um, some nice color from that. I've got a couple different sizes, um, but those are going like crazy right now. So we're going to start with some paper. So for the paper, I have some mixed media paper that was sitting around at home. And then I have, um, this is watercolor paper too. So I'm gonna try it on uh, both. There will be some moisture coming out, um, these petals. So maybe paper that um, can handle that, um, like watercolor paper would be best. I'm going to start laying the flowers just randomly in different places. If they have a lot of, um, a lot going on in the center, um, it was suggested as I was reading other people's experiences that you really cut that out because it, um, it will just, it just make it, aw, well, that's okay. We'll just add that right to it, figure that out. Um, it was suggested that you take those centers out um, only because they can really make, make it quite messy. Um, and these don't have much of a center at all. So I'm not really worried about these. I'm just gonna lay those down flat. It suggested like all this in the center you kind of take out because the pollen would really kind of mess up the painting, the picture. So I'm just gonna go in there and snip that all out. So we've got no more pollen. And see if I can lay it down. Whoops, I'll move that over. We are gonna pound these. And I'm just gonna have to lay that kind of Lay that down. I'm gonna put something over it here in a moment. And I'm gonna get rid of that stamen so that we can, because now that's quite flat. So I'm just gonna cut a couple of these off and see what happens. I'm not gonna do too much here because I don't think there's a whole lot of pigment in there. But we'll see. I like the real simple, you know, four petaled. I love how it gets pink on the edge. I love that. Oh, they start very, very white. And then as that season kind of goes on, oh, there's a good one. They, uh, they get quite pink. So we'll just see what they do. But we, we are going to really be pounding these. 
And in the areas that we don't get pigment, if I want, I could go back and put some watercolor on to kind of fill it in or to give it an extra um, layer of color. Okay, now they say you can like tape all that down, but what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna put some paper over it. And I'm gonna tape that paper down. Maybe that needs to be less paper so it'll tape a little easier. I'm using um, just wax paper. You could use paper towels. So I've added some good old fashioned scotch tape kind of everywhere and hopefully that will be enough depending on what you have at home. Um, I just find that the Masking tape is not so great. Okay, so I brought several things to pound with. One is my hammer. Now, I understand that maybe if you're working with children, you don't wanna work with a hammer, and I understand that. So I brought in a couple other things so we can see how that works. This is my uh, one of my rolling pins, and this maybe you'd feel more comfortable with if you're working with children. And then I just brought like a hard-heeled shoe. Um, you know, I, I don't know yet how um, how well this will do, but I figure everybody's got shoes at home, so that might work. So I'm gonna do a little bit of all of it, and I, we'll uh, just see how that goes. Oh, wow, you can already see that color. So you can, you can see how that has gotten really pulverized. So I'm seeing the color on this side. Hopefully it's going on the paper side as well. I did some rolling. I did some shoe pounding. Um, this was the rolling. I'm going to do that again over here. I thought um, using this really worked it's probably not as hard and heavy and look at all that i don't know if i'm gonna get the shape of the blossom using this but it'd be a really fun way of transferring color and i think kiddos you know this would be a safer option if um you know you, you didn't feel comfortable you now the other thing is the shoe was working pretty good And this is like a rubber heel. This isn't a hard heel, but that has enough power. I think I'm going to use the hammer here. So I've taken the flowers off and like I thought might happen, you can see exactly where the hammer hit or something hit that flower. But I have a really nice outline. I think the outline maybe came from actually using um, the rolling pin. So I'm going to work with this. I will probably use some more um, watercolor to kind of fill it in. And I'm going to scrape the rest of the flower remnants off. I really don't want any of that still there. And I like how right here and right here were my hydrangea petals. They did not add a lot of color, but with the overlapping, you can see that they were there and that um, they, you know, their shadow is there because there was something on top of them. I really, I really think that's a neat feature. So even if you don't you know, if you get a flower that is um, not giving you a lot of pigment, you you could use it in a shadow effect. So I'm going to let this dry. Um, maybe those pieces will come off a little easier after they dry. Impatience. Look at the color here. I mean, that is quite vivid. And I had nothing that color. Like, I think that was the red. The red turned out really purple when we started, uh, when I started pounding. 
Yeah, I don't know if I would use the lilies, the day lilies again. They are very, very, they're full of moisture. Um, you can see that in the end, at the end of the day when they're starting to uh, die, they're just, you know, they're, they're just full of moisture. So I really like the color that they brought. Um, you can see these were the, uh, these were the darker colored. You see that stripe down the middle? Um, so you could, but again, like that darker orange came like a gray purple. Well, and you could do, you know, pull, uh, pull petals off and arrange them how you'd like. Um, but I really, this was a fun technique. It'd be a, a fun exploration of color too. The fact that, you know, the red flowers turn purple, uh, the orange turned kind of gray. You could really have some fun with that. One last uh, kind of end of summer hurrah. I hate to uh, destroy the flowers because I love them. However, in a few days they'd be dead in the yard anyway. So this way is a way to kind of get them to last. And uh, beyond the summer. So it's okay. It's organic material. We're uh it was going to decay at some point anyway. So that's what I have left. And I'm going to jazz it up after it's dried a little bit. I'm back with some dried. I've let our flower pounding dry. And I really like the shape. I think you can see every time I pounded the color kind of escaped and it was hard to tell where when I was pounding what wasn't really getting the pigment on it. Um, that happened kind of over and over. Like you see the pound, pound, pound. And you see the lines. I think that's when I was using the rolling pin and I did some layering. So you can see not really closely, but you can see that there's like a shadow of another flower. So now I'm going to use just some regular uh, watercolors and try to dress that up a little bit. But some, some of them, like this one, I think some of these flowers, um, the smaller impatience turned out really well. Oops, there's a little bit left. <laughs> I thought I got it all. Um, and I think I'm going to cut those out and try to make a greeting card. Um, however, with these, I think I'm going to try to just do some painting. painting on these and this one I brought back um, kind of that bright bright pinkish red color of the hibiscus I, I just love how when we actually started pounding that red become became like a purple blue gray so I've kind of added that color back and in doing so I also trying to really make the shadows of that hydrangea just a little stronger I'm gonna let that dry but I think what I'll do is I'll really cut this out and mount it and just have, you know, a, a picture. Um, I think I'll also cut out some of these impatience that turned out really well and probably make a greeting card. I also worked on this one. I decided to use that blue. It was kind of purple, kind of blue, kind of a mixture. Um, so you, and, and also really trying to outline those hydrangeas. Here are some of the finished products. And I uh, did a lot of cutting. I cut the shapes out so that I could do what I wanted with them. And I really love how that turned out. You can see the hibiscus kind of outlined with the um, watercolors. So you can 
see those hydrangea flowers a little bit better. And then this could go in a frame, it could go in a shadow box. It's just, I think it's really a lovely piece of art. I did it again um, with some of uh, just a different shade of colors, put some blues in there rather than the bright uh, pink hydrangea color that I had to start with. I, I love the, the kind of textures that it added. This The same could be mounted, put in a scrapbook, all kinds of things. Be a nice little gift. And so then I took the flowers, the, the small impatience and I just really we call it fussy cutting I cut all around I, I really like the the texture the different colors we see and I just made some little cards I can put this in the mail um, I used some stamping some stamps to kind of add you know happy birthday um, really quick fun way get well soon to send some sweet wishes to someone. You could add some embellishments to the outside. Thank you. you, know, you could add more to the outside if you wanted to, but I really thought that ended up being a nice way to create, play with color, enjoy the color, make something really unique and, um, you know, maybe make it a gift or a greeting to someone. So I hope you enjoyed um, doing some crafts with me. All right, thanks for joining.